Our next presenter is a good friend of ours who's appeared in the latest season of the Million Dollar Case Study. She's an entrepreneur, investor, and social media influencer. Born and raised in Canada, she started her first online business at age 20 and used the power of social media to gain exposure for her popular women's shapewear brand. She shares e-commerce strategies and self-help tips on her popular YouTube channel, which has over a quarter million subscribers. She is the perfect presenter for this next topic. Having gone through the same setbacks and struggles that most sellers make, at age 24, she bounced back and became a self-made millionaire. Now she travels the world while growing her online business and is giving back the guidance she's learned along the way so that you too can enjoy the pleasures of selling online. We're super excited to have with us today, presenting the topic of avoiding common seller mistakes, Tatiana James. Three, two, one. Here we go! Hey everyone, my name is Tatiana James and I'm here to share with you 10 of the most common mistakes that Amazon sellers make. Now, I don't want you to be afraid of making mistakes. It's all part of the journey of entrepreneurship. We all make mistakes so long as we learn from them and we continue to move forward. But if you can prevent any unnecessary mistakes, then great, let's do that. So the purpose of this video today is to give you a level of awareness around what these common mistakes are so that you can prevent making them in the future. And through my experience over the years, I have found a pattern in the mistakes that beginner Amazon sellers make. And so that's how I have come up with these 10 that I wanna share with you today. Now, before I get started real quick, I want to introduce myself for those of you who don't know me. I started selling on Amazon in late 2014 and I built a multi-million dollar woman's shapewear brand. And it all started with private labeling a product and selling it on Amazon. So this opportunity of selling on Amazon has completely changed my life for the better. I get to live a life where I feel like I have to pinch myself every day just because I get to wake up and decide what I wanna do with my day. And so I know I'm very fortunate, I'm very blessed, but this is an opportunity that you all have as well. And so I'm passionate about sharing it with others on my YouTube channel, Tatiana James, where I share strategies, tips, everything Amazon, e-commerce, and even self-help. So let's get started. Number one, picking a product in a hyper competitive niche. So I need to preface this by saying that you don't wanna be afraid of competition. Competition is usually a good thing because it means that there is demand. The opposite of this is finding a product with very little competition, which usually can mean that there's very little demand. So sure, if you found a product with little competition, you could easily rank to page one and be the number one bestseller. But if very few people are searching for this product on Amazon, how many sales are you gonna be generating per day? Probably not that many. So the key is to find the middle ground, okay? Not too much, not too little. So the way I like to do this is I go on Amazon, I look at the, for the top maybe 12 sellers, and I wanna see how many reviews, you know, I wanna see how established their listings are. If they all have hundreds and hundreds of reviews, sometimes some niches have thousands, uh, that is a signal that, you know, there's a little bit too much competition here. Uh, I may not be able to insert myself here and compete with these guys. Uh, and on too little competition, you know, maybe they have very few reviews or there's just very little demand. I definitely recommend using the Jungle Scout extension to be able to see how many monthly sales uh, the products are, are doing, the products are generating for the top sellers. So be wary of competition. Don't try and go for the pr products that have a lot of household brand names. So very recognizable brand names, um, for example, Johnson & Johnson. So that's a very big household brand name. It can be very hard to compete with them. So if you're selling, for example, in the baby category and there's a whole bunch of these really staple household brand names, it's hard for you to compete because, you know, people recognize those names. You know, they have a marketing budget um, where they can market their commercials on TV and they're in retail stores. And so people, people usually like to buy things that they recognize. Um, and so it can be harder for you to compete with them as well. Okay, tip number two is picking a product with a low selling price. So you don't wanna be picking a product that's selling at a 
low price. And the way I would describe low price is under $15 because anything under that, it's going to be very hard for you to make significant profit margins where it becomes worth your while. There are a lot of expenses that you have to account for when you are selling on Amazon. And it's very easy for your profit margins to just dwindle down, especially when you're paying for advertising, especially during your product launch. Uh, so you don't want to have a product that's selling for too little on Amazon. I would actually encourage you to shoot for a product that's selling at $20 or more. And it's always good to look for a product where there's room to grow. So for example, and I'm going to be giving you a lot of personal examples in this video. I learn through examples. So I'm going to use myself as a way to provide these examples for you with my business. So when I first started selling this brand, this shapewear brand on Amazon, I saw that there were sellers selling it for $19.99. I saw that there were sellers for selling it for $29.99. Some were selling it for 40 bucks. So I saw this pricing variation, which is good because I saw that, yes, maybe the lowest I could sell is maybe $19.99. So I know that, but I have room to grow. As I improve the product, I could actually brand myself as a premium brand and I could sell it for a higher price. So I personally started selling my product on Amazon for $24.99. And as I built more social proof, as I built my brand, improved the quality of the product, I ended up selling, the last price I was selling on Amazon is $59.99. I was selling the highest price um, on Amazon for that particular product. So I encourage you to look at products where there is room to grow because that just means more profits for you in the future. Number three, failure to innovate the product. This is a very common mistake that I see. If you're planning on just finding a product on Amazon that's doing well, selling well, and selling the exact same thing, kind of copying that product and selling a, a version of that with your brand name on, on it, which is what private labeling is. However, this method of just slapping your brand name on the same product doesn't work anymore. It worked in the past, even when I first started it worked, but there's a lot more competition on Amazon and the products are way higher quality now. You wanna innovate, you wanna bring something new to the table. Because if you think about it, you know, if someone else is selling a product, they've got hundreds of reviews and they're an established listing on Amazon, you go and private label that same product, you launch it on Amazon, you're not offering anything new to the table, why would a prospective customer choose to buy your product with zero, zero reviews, selling at the same price, there's not anything new about it, not anything special, why would they choose to buy your product over someone who's more established? They wouldn't. So you make it harder on yourself to attract those sales. So the key is that yes, you want to private label, you're not trying to invent anything here, but the key is that you want to add more value. So you want to change the product in some short shape or form or add value in some way. So for example, with the brand that I was selling, uh, what I did was uh, I first started private labeling the product, just kind of found a manufacturer that had a superior quality than my competitors, which I highly recommend you do. You want to make sure that your product is uh, the best quality on Amazon. So when you are interviewing manufacturers, you want to get samples from them. You also want to buy your competitor's products so that you have a reference, compare the best selling products on Amazon to the samples from your manufacturer. So you know what is good quality because if they're the best selling items on Amazon, they better be good quality because people love them. So it's important to have a high quality qual product. I'll put that out there. So I started selling that, but each time I would place a new order with my supplier, I would change something. So for example, I would look at the reviews. Reviews are so helpful because this is direct feedback from your customers. And even before you have customers, look at the reviews from your competitors, look at their one-star reviews, look at their two-star reviews, look at their five-star reviews, find out what people love about the product and what people hate about the product. So that way you can go to your supplier and you can have a conversation with them. Can we improve this? Can we make this adjustment? Can we add this? Is there a bonus item that we could add to in increase the value, the perceived value of this offer? So with my product, I would go in each time I would place a new order, I would make a small modification. I would change the shape of the product. I would get higher quality hooks for the product. 
I would change the pattern of the product. There were multiple things that I would do to differentiate myself and I would continue to do that with time. So each order I would place, I would make some improvements. The key is to add value. This is the key to success with any business, you know, that's the beauty of business is an exchange of value. A customer is going to give you a form of value in the form of currency, money, their hard earned money in exchange for something that they perceive valuable, a product that you are offering. Okay. So if you can add more value, inc increase the perceived value of your offer, that's going to attract customers. So maybe there's a bonus item that you could add um, that is free for the customer. Maybe your supplier is already manufacturing this item. I like to ask my supplier, is there anything small that you're manufacturing, lightweight, inexpensive that I could add that would complement this product in any way? Maybe it's a drawstring bag. Maybe it's some sort of spoon if you're, you're selling coffee on Amazon, some sort of scoop so that people can easily scoop the coffee out. You know, think of these things. The idea is to be innovative. And it's not even just with the product itself. You can add value outside of the product. One way that I added value to my customers is by creating a community. I realized that this is something that they were lacking and that they wanted. They wanted a community of women to support them on their journey to achieve their goals. And this is just an extra tip for you. You want to find out what are the goals of your customer. You want to find out why are they buying my product? What, what, what is it that they want to achieve? What I learned with my product is that people were buying, these women, most of them were buying body shapewear because they had a certain goal that they want to achieve with their fitness. And so I realized, okay, they're on a fitness journey. Is there any other products or resources I can offer to them to help them on this journey? If they don't buy the products from me, they're going to buy them from someone else. And if I can offer extra additional resources, they're going to thank me for that. So I created a Facebook community and in this Facebook community, they were able to collaborate with one another, add value to each other, find a support system. And it's simple. It's, it's free. It was free to create a Facebook community. And that Facebook community has, I think, over like 30,000 people in it now. And it's amazing. So think of ways outside of the box to add value. It doesn't, do, it doesn't just have to be by changing your product or adding a bonus item. Number four unprofessional product images. Your images on your Amazon listing are everything. Your images are equivalent to what packaging is in a retail setting. So you know when you go to the store and there are 10 different brands of the product that you're wanting to buy, how do you choose which product you want to buy? Well, the first thing you do is your eyes are attracted to a particular packaging. Maybe it's the messaging on the packaging. Maybe it's the colors, but that's what's drawing your attention, at least initially. So packaging is very important in retail, but with an e-commerce business, with an online business, buyers don't have the opportunity to look at packaging, but what they do have are photos. So your Amazon photos are critical. And in the past, you could get away with you know, maybe really cheap Amazon photos. I used to take my own pictures and Photoshop them myself. That doesn't work anymore. I highly encourage you to get professional photos. Look at your best competitors on Amazon and model them. They're the best sellers for a reason. They're doing something right. So model them. You don't copy them, but model them, learn from them. And it's very easy. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be super expensive to get high quality product images done. You can get them done on fiverr.com. Uh, you can take the pictures yourself if you have great lighting or a nice camera, even the latest iPhones, the quality on those phones are amazing. Um, and you can just get them 3D rendered or photoshopped by professional graphics designers on Fiverr, or you could opt for a more professional service. Uh, like a product photography service. But the point is, don't skimp out on your photos. This is important. You want your prospective customers to see that this is a professional brand um, and you want them to be impressed with your images. Now, I will throw in an extra tip here. Make sure that you add text to your images. If you're not adding text, you are missing out on an opportunity to sell your product because Unfortunately, they don't read the bullet points. They don't read the description, especially if they're on a mobile device. But you know what they do look at? The images. 
So don't just put an image there and have a whole bunch of white space. Use that image. Add some, add some bullet points to the image. Mention some features, some benefits, and, and use that space. And always remember to change up the images. It's important to split test images, especially your main image. So try one image for a couple weeks pull the reports to see what the click-through rate is, and then try a different main image for a couple weeks and then pull the reports and see which image performed best. Uh, this is important. I like to do photo shoots for my products. I do different photo shoots. I actually do different photo shoots for different uh, seasons. So for example, Christmas time for the holidays, my products, I lay them out near a Christmas tree with presents. So I have those photos ready on my computer for when that season comes. Uh, and all of the major holidays. And so that way, when I, that season comes, my Amazon listing has been tailored for that season. And it shows people that, hey, this is a giftable product. This is a product I could give to my girlfriend, to my mother, and it gives them ideas. But always remember to have high quality images. So important. Number five, not following Amazon's terms of service. So you always have to remember, and Amazon will remind you, that selling on their platform is a privilege and you must abide by their rules, their terms of service. So Amazon's always changing their rules and it's very important that you stay on top of them. For example, just last year, they changed their rules about buyer seller messaging. In the past, you were able to send automated emails to your customer to give them order confirmation, to let them know that you're here available for support if they need it. Now you're not allowed to communicate with your customers in that way. And so staying on top of these rules is important because if you don't, then it could lead to your account being suspended. It could lead to your listing being removed uh, or suspended. Um, and, you know, another thing that people often do is review manipulation. And I know it can be tempting because reviews are so very important on Amazon. It creates social proof. But do not try and manipulate reviews. You are allowed to ask your customers for a review once. You are not allowed to incentivize them to give you a review or to give you a positive review. Just ask them for their honest review. You're allowed to do that, but don't do any kind of black hat stuff um, to gain more reviews. It is only gonna lead to possibly your listing deactivated or your account suspended. So maybe you don't get caught initially, but eventually you will. Amazon will catch on. So always follow Amazon's terms of service because ultimately, if your listing gets deactivated or your account suspended, that is an income stream that you no longer have. You won't be able to sell on Amazon, at least temporarily. Um, and so that's income that you were dependent on that's no longer there and is actually costing you money in storage fees and other expenses in your business. Number six, lack of PPC management. So as you know, Amazon has a built-in advertising uh, platform and I encourage you to use it because the pay-per-click advertising is really gonna help give your product exposure, especially if you're just launching your product. Uh, everyone should turn on their PPC ads. However, PPC ads can become extremely costly if you aren't monitoring them or if you don't know what you're doing. So I encourage you to educate yourself to learn about how to do keyword research for, first and foremost. Um, you don't just wanna rank for any keyword because certain keywords can be more expensive than others. Certain keywords could be better opportunities. Um, you wanna do good keyword research and you wanna make sure that you're inserting those keywords in the front end and the back end of your listing because Amazon is a search engine. 55% of product searches start on Amazon. And so the way that your listing gets discovered is if you have those keywords that people are searching for embedded into your listing. So that's very important. You can also use the keywords for your pay-per-click advertising, uh, which you need to be managing and monitoring on a regular basis um, because otherwise it can really eat at your profit margins. So make sure you do your homework and monitor those PPC campaigns. Number seven, no inventory management. So it is very important in your business to manage your inventory. Know how many units to order, 
so that you have enough units to stay in stock, but you also don't have too many units where you are overstock and spending money on expensive storage fees at the Amazon fulfillment warehouses. Now, this is something that I struggled with for a very long time. I just, I don't know what it was. I wasn't pulling the reports. I didn't know how to read the reports. I just didn't give it the time of day. And you know, one thing I've learned that as an entrepreneur, it's very important to humble yourself. It's good to recognize what your strengths are, but it is a skill to recognize what your weaknesses are. Very important because if you find that, you know, your weakness is inventory management, rather than always trying to do it yourself and, and not being successful at it, uh, go and hire someone. I eventually hired someone to do this for me. You could also use a software. I recommend Jungle Scouts Inventory Manager. Perfect. You, you know, it's included with your membership. Um, use it, leverage that because that's going to save you time and money in the future. And so for myself, for so long, I was under stock. I did not order enough inventory. I had many, many SKUs and I would always order the same amount for every SKU rather than looking at the reports and seeing, okay, which is the best seller, which isn't selling so well. I should order more of the best seller and less of the one that's not selling well. And instead I just ordered the same amount for every SKU, which ended up meaning that I was overstock in the ones that weren't selling. And I was always out of stock of the ones that were selling. So there was a lot of money that was wasted. Um, so inventory management is key. And I know that when you are first launching your product on Amazon, you might be scared to run out of stock because yes, it can, it can affect your rank on Amazon if you are out of stock because ultimately you have to always remember that Amazon is very customer centric. They want their customers to have a wonderful experience shopping on their platform because they know that many customers the customers don't know that you and I are third party sellers selling them this product. A lot of customers think that when they're buying products on Amazon, they're buying from Amazon. So Amazon has a repu reputation to uphold. And so they don't want you to be out of stock because they don't want a customer to go to your listing, be excited to buy your product, and then the product's not available. So if they find a product that's out of stock, it can hurt your listing rank. However, it doesn't mean that you should order thousands and thousands of units for your very first order simply because you're afraid of being out of stock. Because then what that could lead to is being over stock, having too much stock and paying high inventory storage fees and possibly having inventory that is dead, that doesn't sell. Because when you're first launching a product, you have yet to prove your concept. When you're first launching a product, you know, things are kind of up in the air. You don't know how the product will perform. Of course, a lot of it depends on you, but nonetheless, you don't know. You don't have any history. When you have a little bit more history, it becomes so much easier to do inventory management uh, because you can anticipate sales. So always keep this in the back of your mind. Inventory management right from the beginning is very important. Number eight, depending too much on Amazon. So it's very common that people will focus all of their time as a business owner on their Amazon listing, logging into Amazon Seller Central and everything's done from there, optimizing their listing, managing their PPC campaigns, um, and, and that's kind of it. But there's so much that you can do off of Amazon. You know, launching your product on Amazon is only half the battle. The other half is marketing your product. It's get, gaining exposure. It's getting as many eyeballs on your product as possible because that's how people have now the opportunity to buy your product. And if you're just doing PPC campaigns, although important, you are limiting yourself because there's a million and one things that you can do in the world of marketing that is off of Amazon, such as using Facebook ads, you know, doing video demonstrations, social media, influencer marketing, funnels. There's so much that you can do. So don't just limit yourself to marketing your product on the Amazon platform. Now, the other thing I will say is that you don't want to have all your eggs in one basket. I do recommend that if you're going to start an e-commerce business, you start it on Amazon. Uh, Amazon gives you this level of exposure because they have all these clients, they have all these customers with memberships, one click buy now. So the exposure that you can potentially gain uh, by listing and selling on Amazon is incomparable to what you would have if you were to just launch and sell your product on your own website. 
I would only recommend starting on your own website if you already have a following or an email list, messenger list, some sort of audience uh, that you can directly send them to your website. But if you don't, and most people don't, most people start off from scratch, then Amazon's gonna be your best friend. So start on Amazon, but at some point, you're gonna want to explore your options. At some point, it is important, I would encourage you to look at selling on your own website, okay? Because you don't wanna have all those eggs in one basket. Amazon makes it clear that your listing is not your listing, it's Amazon's listing, it's Amazon's customers. And at any point in time, they could change their terms of service, they could change their algorithm, the sales that you were experiencing last week are different than what you're experiencing this week, your account could get deactivated or suspended. And I don't say this to scare you because the likelihood of that happening is low. Nonetheless, you know, to be responsible, you want to make sure that you aren't 100% dependent on Amazon. Because again, if something happens, that's now your income that is gone. So consider selling on your own website and possibly different marketplaces at some point in time. Not in the beginning, focus your attention on Amazon, but at some point in time, it's good to explore selling on your website. I started my business selling on Amazon. When I started to get to a certain point, a certain number in sales per month, revenue per month, uh, and I had built an email list, a customer list, I had following, I felt comfortable to start selling on my own website. And so I slowly transitioned people to purchasing on my website. I was still selling on Amazon because there's always going to be customers who uh, love to buy on Amazon because of the refund policy, because of the prime shipping. Um, but I also had the option of selling on my website. And by selling on my own website, I had, I had control. I own the website. I have control over my return policy. So I don't have the 30 day money back guarantee, which is great for customers. But as a seller, you know, you, you can lose out for sure. Um, and I can capture these, these customers email addresses and, and actually message them. And I'm in control of, of the messaging and everything and all aspects of that. So you have the control when you're selling on your own website, which is so valuable when you're building a business. And ultimately, a lot of Amazon sellers, they end up selling their business. So at some point in time, you may decide that I've built it up, I'm satisfied with what I've created, I've um, you know built this brand, and I'm ready to sell it and move on to the next thing. And if you are selling a business, I will tell you, people like to see that you're not just selling on Amazon. They will buy businesses that are exclusively on Amazon, but if you're also selling on your own website, they like that. So always from the beginning, set up your business, lay the foundation, keep it in the back of your mind that, yeah, maybe one day I might sell this. So let me stay organized and let me do things um, thinking from the perspective of a buyer. Number nine, we are getting close to the end, guys. Thank you for sticking with me. I hope you're enjoying this. So the ninth one is starting a second product too soon. I say this a lot. When you launch a product and you know, you're know you starting to have some success with it, it can be exciting to start to explore other products and to start working on launching a second product. But I think that the key to success, to long-term success with a product on Amazon is you wanna give it the time of day. You wanna give it your full attention. Do all you can to make this product a success, set up the foundation. And once that's done, then you can consider selling a second product. From my coaching experience, I see that people get really excited within one month of launching their first product, two months of launching their first product, they're already focusing on their second product. And what that's doing, it's diluting your time and your resources. Your time is now split because you're managing this product, you're looking at exploring the second product and your resources are split as you pay for your inventory here, your inventory here. So I would encourage you to do what you can to really lay the foundation for that first product, do all that you can, master it, right? That is mastery, we don't dabble with products. And then you can focus on the second product and you will know when the time is right. Well, I have several different income streams uh, several different businesses and people often ask me, how do I have the time to do it all? And the key is to do one thing at a time. If I were to start all these businesses at the same time, none of them would be successful because I'd be going crazy. I'd be going mad. I'd have to dilute my time, my resources, and I'd be overwhelmed. The key is to start with one business model, one thing, set that up, lay the foundation, set up systems 
so that that business can operate and run without you. And then you can focus more of your time on the next one and then the next one. And so that's how I was able to create several different income streams that pretty much operate without me. And, uh, and it's the same thing with your Amazon product. Okay. So you want to make sure that you get it to the place where you don't have to invest so much time every single day on that product so that you have the time and the resources to be focusing on the second one. All right. We are at the end with number 10, giving up three feet from gold. So I completely understand if you are an entrepreneur, you're starting a business for the very first time, you have to accept that there is going to be a learning curve. There is a lot to learn and there will be challenges. There will be problems that you are faced with and it can be discouraging. It can be disheartening day after day, week by week. You know, there's always something that happens. There's always a problem that surfaces, a fire to put out. And it's easy to get to the point, the breaking point where you just want to pull your hair out and just say, I have had enough. It's not worth it. I don't want to continue. And this is the devastating and unfortunate part because you could be just like that guy who's digging in the sand for this box of treasure and has been digging and digging and working hard and, um, you know, putting in a lot of back labor to, to get to this treasure and finally just gives up. But he's three feet away from hitting the treasure box, three feet away from gold. And that could be you and your business. Because in business, you're going to be investing a lot up front. You know, unlike your job where you're trading your time for money, you are um, working a set number of hours and you are guaranteed a paycheck every two weeks or every month. You know, it's different in business. In, di in business, you're investing your time, your resources, your energy all up front without any guarantees of anything. And it can be weeks, it can be months before you start to see that profit, before you start to gain momentum. But you always have to remember something called compounding. And all the efforts that you're putting in up front, they are compounding. And they are going to lead to, you know, the seed that sprouts, right? The seed, when you plant the seed for the first time, you don't get to reap the fruits that day. You have to water it, you have to nurture it, you have to take care of it. And with that awareness, you know that it's going to take a few days or a couple of weeks for you to see any of the seeds sprouting. Um, and eventually, you know that it's going to bear fruit. And so you're patient with it because you can anticipate the process. You're not expecting success overnight. OK, so it's the same thing with your business. I don't want you to give up. It can be easy to say, OK, I'm done. But, you know, this starting a business, becoming an entrepreneur, it's, it's an incredible opportunity of a lifetime to create life on your terms, to work for yourself, to work from home, to have flexibility, to be your own boss. Um, so always know that, you know, if you, if you know what, it, why it is that you're doing this, have a strong reason why you want to continue, then whatever challenge that you are faced with, you're going to be able to overcome because you always remember your reason why. You always have something to look forward to, something to pull you forward. So don't give up, my friends. And the last thing I will say is that, you know, if you have not yet started your business, <laughs> that's probably the number one mistake is not even getting started, right? I have um, hundreds of thousands of people on YouTube who subscribe to my channel, many of them go to my channel and watch my videos every week video after video, investing hours and hours into their education. And they continue to learn and learning is a wonderful thing. Great. Awesome. So happy that you're learning. So happy that you're here watching this. But for every hour that you spend learning, you got to spend two hours doing. So take action, do something, get started, because otherwise you're just going to be one of those per people who say they want to do something, they never actually do it. So in order to get results, you got to get started. So make sure that you start your business and do something today, something right now to help you make the first step. It can be something small. It can be something big, but do something today because once you start gaining momentum, an object in motion stays in motion, right? It's when you start gaining momentum, things get easier. You start to build a routine and uh, it, it all becomes easier. So. 
I hope that you enjoyed this. Um, 10 of the most common mistakes that beginner Amazon sellers make. Again, don't be afraid of making mistakes, but if you can anticipate these things, then when the time comes, you'll remember, oh yeah, I remember Tatiana said this, maybe I should reevaluate what I'm doing here, okay? Um, I hope you enjoyed. If you want to learn more about Amazon FBA, e-commerce, all of that stuff, I've got lots and lots of content on my YouTube channel called Tatiana James. It's all free, uh, all these resources for you, and Jungle Scout is fabulous. So. Jungle Scout has so many incredible resources. Make sure you get the membership if you don't have it because Jungle Scout is essential for your business, um, especially when it comes to product research, but they offer so much more. It's just gonna save you so much time and help you discover incredible products that you probably wouldn't be able to discover on your own. All right, guys, take care, enjoy. Thank you, Tatiana, for all the actionable steps that our viewers can take to hopefully avoid making the same mistakes. It's refreshing to hear that even someone with your experience can make mistakes too. So if you make mistakes along the way, then don't be discouraged. If you're not making mistakes, then you're most likely not taking enough chances. Have you ever made one of these common seller mistakes? Let us know down in the comments. If you've gotten any value from this session, then let us know by giving us a big thumbs up down below. Now, if you're wanting to learn how to optimize your listing and how to increase your SEO rank, then make sure to join us in the next session. I'll see you there. Something came up twice. It was like something got disconnected. Okay. Like the mouse trackpad. I think it was your tr yeah, the trackpad got disconnected. Yeah. <laughs> it made me laugh. Slack? Oh, sorry. It's fine. I <laughs>